You've made it here. Welcome. My name is Oliver Caro, and I'm a conservation architect. And this project has taken maybe four years of my professional life, and it's been a thrill from start to finish. But I have to say, coming here for the first time, you saw this place in a fairly sad and sorry state. And that's not to undermine years and years of work done to repair the roofs and try and sort out some of the really serious structural problems with this building, with rainwater pouring through it, for instance. But even after all of those works, when I came here, it looked very sad. And if you can imagine your own house and the boiler doesn't work and the electrics don't really work and there is water running through your living room and uh, the paint is peeling off the walls and there are holes in the windows and pigeons in your loft, um, you can imagine a little bit about how this place felt. This room was dank and a bit damp and painted in all sorts of odd and slightly weird theatrical paint and pretty gloomy, pretty atmospheric, it has to be said, but nothing like as delightful as it was today. And in the church space, perhaps the thing you missed most of all was you just couldn't read the wonderful artworks that are above your head. And outside, there was damaged brickwork, and you could really see the ravages of time on this building. So a big problem and a big task, a daunting and expensive task to try and navigate. So part of my job working with the team here was in what order and in what priority did we need to get the conservation programme going? But also I was perhaps a reader of the building. And there is such deep history here. And that history lies in our memory, but it's also in the materials, in the stone, the wood, the windows, the paintings. So to be a narrator of those materials is partly what the conservation architect does. But having understood the building and understood its problems, we then have to come up with a plan of action. And partly that's about ordering the budget and deciding what we spend our money on and in what order. And here it was really clear, and not all, it's not always the case. We needed the interior of this building to radiate its majesty and beauty. And that's what we've tried to bring to life. But then it's a process of marshalling an enormous amount of resource and people to do a programme of conservation. So with real care, decide what every surface needs and what it's asking for in terms of cleaning or pointing or repair and writing all of that down in drawings and specifications which go out to tender. And then it's a process of marshalling an enormous team of craftspeople, uh, conservators who come with scalpels and tissue paper and irons and wax and uh, a box of chemistry, to masons who cut out stone with hammers and chisels, to bricklayers who repoint. Taking a wall like this, my specification was all about getting the wall to breathe again. Um, so we had to take out all the old mortar and then put back new, softer, breathable mortars and monitor all of that through the process. Um, look at the ceiling above us. We went through layers and layers and layers of paint layers to get back to this extraordinary pink brick plaster, which we still don't know really how it was made to make this space um, come alive again. So that's the role of a conservation architect, a reader of the building, an understanding of uh, the client's needs and what the building needs and speaking for that, and then marshalling all of this skill and craftsmanship uh, to make a building that smiles once again.